Hello everyone and welcome to day 9 of solving lead code problems on Tom Hired by Fan Company. Today we're going to be solving 1509 minimum difference between largest and smallest value in three moves. Okay, so finally medium problem. Starting to get bored of those easy problems. You're given an integer array nums. In one move, you can choose one element of nums and change it to any value. Return the minimum difference between the largest and smallest value of nums after performing at most three moves. Sounds interesting. So example one, we have nums five, three, two, and four, and our output here would be zero. We can make at most three moves. All of them are three. So after performing three moves, the difference between the minimum and maximum. So yeah, we have to return the minimum difference that we can get, right? Which really is, well, yeah, of course. So at most three moves, we didn't need to use three. We could have used two and changed three to three to two, four to two, five to two, right? Those were three numbers, right? Which is basically telling me that since we can change three numbers, the numbers that we need to get is basically the third or actually the fourth largest number and the fourth smallest number that there is. I mean, here I'm just trying to think that my approach is to lower the biggest numbers, right? The three biggest numbers and change them to the lowest numbers. But maybe that would not work for every case, right? Maybe we could have a special case in which we would have to do to the, change the minimum to another maximum. Like for example, in this case, we're going to use on the second example, right? Output should be one. Let's just write it here down, right? We could have them probably in a heap or well, basically sort it. So nums would actually be zero, one, five, 10 and 14. So we start iterating from left to right, right? We could basically delete zero, change zero to one to make it the second smallest value or 14 to 10. Since this is a bigger difference than zero to one, we would again change this to 10 basically and, and put our index here, right? So we have done one change. So this is basically after one change. After the second change, we're going to have again 10 and 5 or 0, 1. What's the bigger difference? Well, the bigger difference is indeed 5 and 10. So we are also going to change this to the uh, smaller number. Like we're going to have 5 as our maximum value. We would actually not really need to change anything, but just, just to have it clear, like the maximum value would technically be 5 now. Right, so this was after the second change. And once again, we can do the same thing for change three. So we can check, okay, so zero, one, or five and one. Well, this is definitely the case. So our index would move one to the left, but our the maximum value would now be one. And now we would get the difference between those two. And I believe that would successfully return the minimum difference between the largest and smallest value, right? Of course, this algorithm would have a time complexity of O of n log n. Uh, it's not linear, but I believe it's good enough for this type of problem. So we should actually just go ahead and start coding this up. We have nums, which we are going to be sorting. But even actually before sorting, we're just going to get the length of nums <clears throat> and actually check. So if n is less than or equal to four, then we're always going to return zero because we can change 
because as we saw in example one, we can change basically all of the numbers. So we can be certain that um, the result here would be zero. And well, in any other case, we are indeed going to sort nums. Then we're going to have a left index, which would be like a min, but let's just call it L equals zero. And right is going to be equal to N minus one. And well, actually we're just going to have a loop. So for I in range of three, right, which is the amount of times we can do a change, we're going to start checking, right? So we are basically checking, okay, so five, um, right, so we're, so we're basically checking here, this would be 14. So one minus zero, this is one, or 14 minus 10, which is four. So which one is bigger? So if this one is bigger, we're going to change L plus equal one. And else, we're going to do R minus equal one. Actually, I believe after our for loop, we would simply return um, nums at R minus nums at L. Okay, so three test cases have been accepted. And well, let's see what happens if we submit this. Okay, so we have a wrong answer. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is that even though our algorithm would technically be correct, we are missing a special consideration. The difference here for both the left case and the right case would be zero. So it's just going to use the default one uh, that it has, which in this case is basically going to be else, which is R minus equal one, right? But the problem here is that we have already like here we would need to traverse twice six to finally change to a different number. Where instead here, if we would have changed L one to the right, now we would be one away of finally changing one to another number. And in this case, we would have successfully returned the difference, the minimum difference, which is six minus four, two. We, this could probably even be a very big number, right? Which actually just leads me to do an algorithm that would include just checking all of the possibilities, which is not, it, even though it sounds terrible, it's actually not going to be that bad since all the possibilities are, well, here we have one scenario, which is three, then another scenario would be on the left where we change two to the left and one to the right. And one final scenario when we change two to the right and one to the left. So these are not a lot of scenarios here. I believe we can do, we can make do with this type of approach. And in this case, I believe we wouldn't even need a for loop. We would just assign like all of the differences so we could actually just have here a res is going to be equal to an array, right? So we could actually simply do here res dot append, which is going to be nums at r indeed minus three, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus nums at l. Yeah, we could actually even not just append, we could have here res equals a very big number float.inf and we're simply going to be returning. So res is equal to min between res and this difference. Now r minus one and l plus two. And I actually believe that would be it. And we would simply return res. Let's just go ahead and try this here real quick. Okay, so three tests test case is accepted. And if we submit this, okay, there it is. Beats only 12% of, um, of the results and memory wise, it's also not very efficient. Okay, so actually every single of these solutions uses an O of N log N approach. So this is actually very efficient, probably this is not as greedy as we would want it to be, but really like 
for me this is constant time so i guess i'm very happy with um this solution and well yeah i believe that would be it